Welcome to As We Get Older. I'm Laura Orndeff, and this is the second video in a series of looking at nursing facilities for either you or your loved ones. And with me again is Kirsten Westfall, and very happy to have you back. Nice to be back. Thank you so much. And this one, in this particular video, we're going to focus on um, you're visiting the facility. So you're physically yes. actually stepping foot on the ground. You're actually in the facility. So exactly. what are some things that I should be prepared for? So do one I... of the things that you can do before you go in, after you've looked at your, narrowed down your list from the medicare.gov site where you have the nursing home compare and look at the star ratings, you can actually print off a nursing home checklist. And it's really good to bring this with you when you do go visit one of the facilities because it gives you simple yes and no answers. It's a, there provide, it provides a space where you can actually write notes to yourself, which is also important because you want to remember certain things. It's very overwhelming to go and look for a place for mom and dad. Yes. And so you want to make sure you are taking notes so that when you get home at night and you're mulling over everything that you've done, that you can remember, oh yes, I remember this about this facility, I wrote this about this facility. So that's, you really do want to go in prepared with the nursing home checklist. Mm -hmm. And you can find that, we're going to put the site on the blog because it's actually a, a longer website. Very long. <laughs> yes. <laughs> address. Sorry. So the nursing home checklist covers a variety of different areas, basic information is the facility Medicare and Medicaid certified. Now what this means is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid come in every year and do an inspection that's conducted by a state agency. Now you can find a perfectly good facility that is not Medicare or Medicaid certified, but you need to keep these things in mind. If it's not Medicare certified and mom or dad falls, breaks a hip, God forbid, but it does happen, and they need yes. rehab, physical therapy, occupational therapy, in order to get stronger and to get back to their functioning level, you're not going to be able to do that in a non-Medicare uh, certified facility. They'll have to go elsewhere for that rehab okay. and then come back. Medicaid, if it's not a Medicaid certified facility, it simply means you're going to have to be able to afford to pay out of pocket for that facility. And if mom or dad runs out of funds, you're going to be asked to move. So that is one consideration. Most facilities are actually Medicare and Medicaid certified. That's the norm, but there are a few that aren't. But it is not a deal breaker. It is should not be a deal breaker if you end up going and touring one. Okay. And you really like it. Okay. So also, um, you want to make sure that the nursing home and the administrator are both licensed. And you're going to be able to see those licenses on the wall. Every nursing facility has to display that information. You also want to make sure that there's a bed available. That's one of the first questions you want to ask. And what's the waiting list looking like? Because if there is no bed available and there's a waiting list that's potentially up to a year long, you and you're really looking for now, you want to go ahead and move on and take that particular nursing facility out of the running. Now, do you have any thoughts? Because when mom and I were looking with for dad, mm -hmm. um, we went through several different places. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we found the best one. Yes. <laughs> uh, which we figured we were going to go back to. But there was one we were looking at, and they had a lot, a lot of vacancies. He could go straight into a private room. I mean, it was, they could have taken like that hour. Mm -hmm. Is that something it just happens to be or is it a concern your thoughts i would look at the star rating in conjunction okay. with the facility unfortunately sometimes there is there are turnover. time periods and turnover mm -hmm. where there may be more beds available but i would really look at the star rating of that facility okay. and if it's good it just might be that at this point in time, they're just low on census. Two days later, it would have been full again. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So it doesn't, you just have to really evaluate all pieces of the puzzle. Okay. Okay. Also, you want to make sure that the nursing home is within a reasonable radius for friends and family to visit, obviously. Yes. 
You also oh, yes. want to know what resident policies they have because there are rules that folks have to follow. If your mom or dad or loved one is a lifelong smoker and you want to continue that, you want to make sure that that's something that they allow at the facility because a number of facilities don't are non-smoking and they will not allow residents to smoke. Okay. Is that just on the grounds or the grounds, the, the building, or is that The per... building, the grounds, everything. But it's just really look... per... Facility. It's really per facility, exactly. More and more are going to non-smoking, but there are still a few holdouts that will allow you to smoke. Okay. Also, extra charges. If mom goes to the beauty shop, is she going to have to pay a fee for the beauty shop? And I will say that most facilities, yes, there is a fee for the beauty shop. And then also, are they going to let you know when the rates change? So mm. if you're looking at $25 for a haircut and you think, okay, that's reasonable, are they going to let you know before mom or dad moves in if those rates are going to change? Not only beauty shop, but also daily rates. Because if you're paying money out of pocket and you're anticipating one daily rate, is that, going, is that anticipated to go up? And it will. There are cost of living increases and and facilities do raise their rates. Now, is it common, again, per facility, but in general, to have, um, I know where Dad was, there was what they called the trust fund. Yes. So I would just put in like $100 every few months mm -hmm. when he got his hair cut and different things like that. Is that kind of a, the norm at facilities? It is the norm, yes. Because then it's a way that you don't have to write a check each and every time. It can just, the, the beauty shop can build a trust fund, the money goes out, it's seamless. Or if they're going to go on an outing and you don't have to worry if you're working and then and you can't get money to dad to go out to lunch with the group, then mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about that. So it is good to have a trust fund. And I can say, again, per facility, I can't say for all facilities, right. but where dad was, um, he actually earned interest. So I think he usually kept like, he usually kept like $100, $150 and every month he earned a penny interest. He got a penny. Wow, that's actually something I didn't know. Yeah, he that's actually, actually got a, pretty a, cool. a, a, <laughs> one penny, so 12 cents a year. Um, but yeah, it was, but it was also nice. And when he passed, they refunded that. So it's not exactly. like, it's not like, here's the money, I'll never see it again. Right. It was refunded. Absolutely. As with, if you are paying privately out of pocket too, once your loved one leaves that facility, if they leave on the 15th, you're paying a monthly, you're paying by the month, but you will be refunded for whatever right. days your loved one isn't in the facility. The next thing you want to look at is really safety and care. Every nursing facility has to have a copy of their yearly inspection available. And they, you want to make sure if there's any citations that they've received, you know, that that is all laid out with their inspection. And usually it's kept in a binder somewhere in the facility. Sometimes it's actually right in the lobby where you're waiting to have a tour, or it could be in an office, but you want to make sure that it's readily available. You can also look for it on the medicare.gov website too, because it's actually there. Preventing abuse. That's a really big one. One of the biggest things that you want to look for is what is the, re the relationship like between the residents and the staff? Are the staff warm and friendly with residents or are, are they... Do they have good eye contact? Are they engaging? Or are people sitting around in wheelchairs looking very bored, looking scared? I mean, you can really tell a lot by what the, how the residents look. Mm -hmm. Are they dressed appropriately? Or are they in Johnny's and are they well kept? Really, when you go into a nursing facility, you want to use your senses, your eyes, your ears, your nose. Very important. So if I walk into a facility and there's a urine smell, is that a deal breaker? It shouldn't necessarily be a deal breaker. There are times of day where there may be more of an odor when folks are being changed. Right. There's a lot of incontinence in older adults. But if that's the first thing that you smell when you walk in, and that's the persistent smell through the entire facility, really not a, a good sign. But if Honestly. I'm going down and I just catch on part of one hall, because again, people are incontinent, th th things happen, and they need to be changed, which is a good thing. <laughs> right. And so if I just have that one time, that's actually, you know, 
it's not the norm, but it, but it happens. Right, it happens even in the best of nursing homes. But if every hall smells it's, like that, and if you get close to the residents and you're smelling a urine smell, that's, that's a problem. Red flag. Exactly. Okay. You also want to make sure that the facility is actually checking doing background checks on their staff to make sure that they aren't on a sex offender registry, that they don't have any um, allegations against them that have gone to any of the state licensing boards. And that is, again, across all 50 states. Everyone has a, a state registry for the nurses and nursing assistants, and they will publish if someone has gotten an infraction okay. of any sort. Um, also looking at policies and procedures that the facility has, do they have policies and procedures in place to uh, prevent abuse and neglect. And also, what happens when there is an allegation? How do they handle an allegation with a staff member? If there is a facility that has had an abuse or neglect citation, when you're looking on the star rating, that nursing home compare checklist, that will actually have a little circle with a hand in it. And that actually indicates, yes, there actually has been a citation against that facility for abuse or neglect. So that symbol again is the circle? It's the circle with a hand in it. Okay. We'll stop. So oftentimes there are, there are allegations even in the best of facilities of abuse and neglect. It's whether they're founded or not. And the state takes those very seriously and they will investigate each and every one. Okay. So, and some are founded, some are not. Menus and food, that's another thing. Look at the menus. If you happen to go during mealtime, look at what the food looks like. Are residents actually eating the food? You don't really want to make sure that it's going to be something that your loved one likes. Again, staff, very important. If you see a staff member going into a resident's room, you want to make sure that they are knocking on the door first before entering because privacy is huge. Because it's their home. It's their home and they're going into their home. Yeah. Are the staff calling the residents by name? Kind of sounds pretty basic, but there are some places where, you know, the staff may really not know the residents all that well. And that's a big red flag. I know when dad first moved in, mm -hmm. everybody didn't know him that well, so it was always Mr. Orndoff. Yes. And then as I got to know him, Irv. Irv, exactly. Because <laughs> he's like, call me Irv. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was that very familiar, but again, that respectful. Absolutely. And then it was, Irv, how you doing? Let's watch football. <laughs> yep. So yeah. Exactly. Also, you want to know if there is a licensed nurse in the building 24 hours a day, seven mm -hmm. days a week. There are different licenses. There's RNs, LPNs, but you want to know what level of licensed staff is in the facility. Also, do they have certified nursing assistants that are aiding in the care? And again, that all falls into staffing ratio. You can ask what the staffing ratio is and how many CNAs per, um, per resident, because if one CNA has 20, 25 residents, that's a problem. You want to look for, that comes back to that staffing ratio of looking of to the, you know, staff to nurse, staff to CNA. And the staffing ratio is going to be different on the different level halls. Absolutely, because there are different levels of care. And some facilities are just straight nursing facilities and it's across the board, but then you get into some of what I refer to as life plan communities and things are different. And we'll go into that later. Also, resident choice. Do they get a chance to choose what they want to eat? Do they, are they offered what time they want to go to bed, what time they want to get up, when they want to shower, what they want to wear? All of this is very important for the dignity of residents. We want to make sure that mom and dad are really being respected. Again, so, it's their home. Exactly. It's their home. Also, most facilities will have a residence council and even some facilities will have a family council and that meets periodically. So that's also another important thing to look for. So these are all really important things to look at and here you also want to know how the residents are being spoken to. Are they being spoken to nicely or is it more stern? You just look around, look around closely. So one thing that when, because mom and I actually 
were we were kind of in a time crunch because mm -hmm. dad was right. you know in a rehab things I mean, it's like it was he, we need to find a place for him we had always heard mm -hmm. just show up and we actually looked at it was like four or five different facilities mm -hmm. and we just showed up every single one every single time um was that correct was that appropriate absolutely Really, you just want to come in unannounced. There should be a staff member. You may have to wait a few minutes, but you, there should be a there. staff member that can, can take you around the facility and give you a tour. Absolutely. Okay. Now, if, let's say, um, I'm looking for a place for mom, mm -hmm. and she's fully alert. She's walking a mile or two a day. I mean, she's, but she just doesn't want to live in a house. I mean, she just wants to move into a community and so she's very independent. Right. Do I want to look at the independent? I obviously want to look at one of the houses or the condos. If if the was it retirement community or you called it a, you could, life plan community. Life plan community. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people outside of the world we call it um, retirement communities. But when you're looking at the life plan community, do I want to just look at the houses or do I want to take time to look at like up to the skill level, which is the most advanced care? You really want to look at everything because. Mom could be extremely healthy when she moves in. A day later, a week later, a month later, a year later, mom could have a significant event, a stroke, a heart attack, dementia, and things could change very, very quickly. So you want to make sure that every level of care is up to your standard so that as mom moves through those levels, you're going to be comfortable with the care that she's receiving. And when you do go look at and the facility, if it is a life plan community, you are going to want to call ahead first and set up a, a, an appointment with the marketing person of okay. an independent living. Okay. Because really they're going to want to make sure that maybe invite you during a mealtime so that mom can experience the food. Also making sure that there's an apartment available if they don't have a model available, which would be unusual. But if they didn't, making arrangements with a resident ahead of time to be able to show you what an apartment looks like. And that's only respectful to the resident who's living there. Exactly, exactly. So, but in terms of skilled nursing facility or even assisted living, just show up. That's what you want to do is just show up. Okay. Yeah. So, hopefully we've given you a lot of things to think about. Um, yes. Check the blog because, again, we'll have that because uh, I've... I was looking at it before we shot this video, and it's like there's a lot of really good stuff that I was very fortunate. Again, we landed in a great place, but that would have been great to have. I did not know about it. And so I encourage you just to look through it. It's got some just wonderful information, stuff you don't even think about. So Exactly. Um, so hopefully great information, and uh, we are going to see you in the next video. So, again, more coming in this series. Kirsten will be back with us. So see you in the next video.